All right, and welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be going through section 2.4, which is all about special pairs of angles. And by the end of this video, we should be able to apply the definitions of complementary and supplementary angles, as well as use the theorem about vertical angles. So without further ado, let's have out our guide and notes. Let's begin. So real quick, complementary angles are two angles whose measure have a sum of 90 and those are going to be complementary. So supplementary angles are two angles whose measures have a sum of 180 degrees. So for example, on the left hand side, the measure of angle X plus the measure of angle Y is going to be equal to 90 degrees. Angle X and angle Y are complementary, or we can also say that angle X is a complement of angle Y. Over on the right hand side, the measure of angle T plus the measure of angle U is equal to 180 degrees. Angle T and angle U are supplementary, and angle T is going to be a supplement of angle U. You're going to see those last phrases. Angle X is a complement of angle Y, and angle T is a supplement of angle U a lot this year. So we should start to familiarize ourselves with those two phrases. So with this general setup, please work on problems one through four on the guide and notes and resume when you're ready to go through an example together. So example one, we're given that the angle C and angle D are complementary. And the measure of angle C is equal to 3y minus 5. The measure of angle D is equal to 9 or is equal to y plus 15, sorry. Find the value of y, the measure of angle C, and the measure of angle D. So there's a lot getting thrown out here, so let's just start to piece it together. Well, angle C and angle D are complementary, which means that they have a sum of 90 degrees. Well, we're also given that the measure of angle C is equal to 3y minus 5, and the measure of angle D is equal to y plus 15. Therefore, we can start to substitute a little bit. We can start by saying that 3y minus 5 plus y plus 15 is equal to 90. And again, that's after we state it. The measure of angle C plus the measure of angle D is equal to 90. We have to have a geometric setup before we input algebraic situations. Sorry, just, just pause there. So, so long as we have our geometric setup, then we can start and adapt to our algebraic setup. And we can solve through here, and we find that y is going to be equal to 20. So now we have the measure of angle C is equal to 3y minus 5. We state our geometric setup, and now we're going to be able to input. And we find that the measure of angle C is equal to 55. And lastly, we were asked to find the measure of angle D, so y plus 15. Again, we know that y is equal to 20, so therefore, the measure of angle D is equal to 35. In example two below it, we're given that a supplement of an angle is seven times a complement of the angle. And we're asked to find the measures of the angle, its complement, and its supplement. So when we go through the solution, we have to deduce a couple of things. We're going to let x be the measure of the angle. Whatever angle it is, it's going to be x. Then we're going to have 90 minus x is the measure of its complement, and 180 minus x is the measure of its supplement. Because to be a complement means that it's two angles that have a sum of 9 degrees. A supplement is two angles that have a sum of 180. So if we're starting with 90 and we're taking away what we're trying to find, likewise, we start with 180, take away what we are trying to find. Well, we can input this back into our problem. We have in our, in our example that the supplement is seven times a complement. So we're going to have seven times 90 minus X because that's gonna be our complement. And now we can go forward and we can solve for x and find that x is going to be equal to 75. So therefore, the measure of the angle is 75. The measure of the complement would be 90 minus x, and we know x is 75, so therefore it's 15. And the measure of the supplement is 180 minus x, but again, we know x is 75, so we get 105. All right, with this in mind, please work on problems 5 through 11 on the guide and notes and resume when you're ready to move forward. So when two lines intersect, vertical angles are formed. So in the figure, 
we have angle one and angle three are vertical angles. Angle two and angle four are vertical angles. Notice how they are opposite of each other. And when we establish these vertical angles, we're gonna find that vertical angles are congruent. So that means that the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle three. And the measure of angle two is equal to the measure of angle four. Likewise, angle one is congruent to angle three. Angle two is congruent to angle four. And with this, let's go through an example of how we might use it within a situation. In the diagram to the right, we're given that ray XZ bisects angle YAU. We want to name three angles that are congruent to angle YAZ, and we want to find the value of X. So when we talk about a solution, we want to start to look at the diagram, see if we can piece anything together. Well, we have angle YAZ. So first thing we want to find is, hey, is there going to be a vertical angle formed with it? And then from there, we're going to try to find some other congruencies. Well, we're going to have angle YAZ, so our starting point. That's going to be congruent to angle ZAU. And we're going to have that's going to be also congruent to angle WAX and angle WAV. WAV is going to be the vertical angle that is created there. And likewise, we're going to have X minus 10 is equal to 50 because we have vertical angles. So that means that X is going to be 60. All right, kiddos, great job with this. Keep up the great work. Keep making yourself proud. Keep watching me struggle to find it. I found it. So please work on problems 12 through 21 on the guided notes. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you soon.